It was a great lead-in by Luke uh, talking about how, uh, as an interconnect company, Samtech tries our best uh, to add value, uh, not only in the interconnect solutions that we offer, but also in the design services and the design support uh, that we provide uh, for uh, the various interconnections uh, along the system. Um, you've already heard from various speakers uh, about uh, the PAM uh, setup uh, that we've been working on, uh, driving that from uh, as ECU 28 to the DTRX card uh, and the like. And throughout that signal chain from the antenna to bits, uh, there's any number of uh, interconnection points, whether that's a, uh, a high-speed board-to-board uh, mezzanine-style connector uh, to traditional uh, PCB mount uh, connectors, whether that's compression mount or SMA type, uh, to RF cables uh, and the like. So it would be very easy to pull apart uh, every transition from a PCB to a connector or from a connector to a cable and look how that affects the signal integrity or the RF integrity along the signal chain. Uh, but for purposes of our demonstration, purposes of our presentation uh, today, we're just going to look at two uh, brief areas. And as Luke alluded to, uh, one of the, the transition points uh, that we want to focus in on is how do we get digital analog RF from the RFSOC, the, a, the AMG Zinc RFSOC carrier card to DTRX in a uh, simple way. Um, presents a number of different design challenges uh, when trying to route so many different types of signal types through uh, connectors. So when you think about the RFSOCs, as, as Luke illustrated, there's various ADCs, there's various DACs, there's various uh, clocking, there's various data, and there's very, various power. Uh, traditionally, you know, when thinking about an RF DAC or an RF ADC, uh, when routing those traces from one PCB to another, you know, you'd typically use an SMA connector uh, or some other uh, smaller RF uh, interconnect solution. But some of the challenges uh, when, when looking at uh, connecting dozens of, signal, dozens of signals and, and, and various signal types from a, a, a motherboard or carrier card to a daughter card, um, when you start to look at traditional uh, connectors, there's, there's challenges uh, that could come up in the design process. Uh, connector misalignment, which we'll talk about, uh, board real estate, you know, dozens and, and hundreds of SMAs get very, get very bulky, get very expensive, get very heavy. Uh, it's, it's a challenge. You don't want to board this big, you want to board this big, uh, and, and potentially cost. So in working with Avnet and working with AMD Xilinx on the design of the ZCU-208, this was really the birth of what Samtech now calls our analog over array uh, technology. Uh, and it was really a combination of how do we use a high-speed digital mezzanine connector to route RF power clocking data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, AMD, Xilinx at the time, uh, developed the RFMC spec, uh, RF mezzanine card connectors, uh, using some of our solutions. There was an original 1.0 spec. There's a 2.0 spec. Uh, that was developed for the ZCU-208. And we'll start to talk about some of the details as to, to, as to what design efforts uh, went into uh, optimizing uh, not only the, the pinout in terms of signal type, but also uh, grounding throughout the connector uh, to optimize performance. Why is this something that we're considering? Well, Samtech has uh, a number of open pin field arrays uh, across our, our product portfolio. And what that is referring to is that any one contact, any one contact on a connector from a digital standpoint can refer to a digital signal, whether it's differential, uh, high-speed referential, or, uh, or power. With the work that we started with AMD and Xilinx, Avnet, Otava, the rest of it, the rest of the team on this presentation, we've expanded the capabilities to optimize the pinout, optimize the, the, the layout of the, of, the, of the connector to support also analog differential pair and analog single-ended. Why do we do that? Well, as AMD and Xilinx, AMD Xilinx, uh, came out with their, their Zinc ultra-scale solution, and as, as it has uh, progressed from one generation to the next, there are key RF parameters uh, that they've put into their data sheets uh, that any system designer have to hit to make the, uh, the signal integrity f uh, flow cleanly uh, throughout the system. So you can see from, these are just excerpts uh, of a couple of their data sheets from the device that's on the ZCU-208. Uh, it's the ZCU6DR uh, devices. Uh, you can see the RF ADC electrical ca uh, character, uh, characteristics and the RF DAC uh, characteristics on the slide uh, in front of us. And for these specific platforms, they have an analog bandwidth of about 8 gigahertz. Uh, the crosstalk specification uh, out, to, uh, out to 8 gigahertz was roughly 63 dBc. 
and then a return loss of, of, of at least uh, 10 dBs. So we were able to hit those specifications uh, from a connector standpoint and from a channel standpoint to help performance of the entire system. But we're, what were some of the design tricks uh, that we worked on with AMD Xilinx, Otava, uh, and Avnet to help, to help hit this? Um, you can see these are just a few extractions from uh, a lot of the technical documentation that Luke alluded to, some of the, the internal uh, documentation that we have uh, when it comes to this process. Um, you can see on the, the left-hand side, is that thing working? There it is. So you can see how uh, isolated we had to make the RF differential pairs uh, for each of the specific channels. There's a tremendous amount of grounding. Now granted, that's highly optimized and not every uh, high-speed board board application is going to be able to have that much grounding. Um, but it shows the capabilities that the, that the, that the connectors can offer uh, via the optimization uh, that we provide uh, from a design services standpoint. So not only is it optimizing the pinout, it's also optimizing uh, the artwork as well. In addition to pinout, uh, We've learned uh, and developed a, a tremendous amount of design expertise in terms of how to ground RF connectors uh, on a PCB, whether it's using a microstrip or a strip line uh, a style solution. So when you look at the uh, launch optimizations of signals coming off the connectors, on the left-hand side, you'll see that there's uh, the routing, the via placement, is, is optimized for uh, digital performance, uh, especially from a uh, high-speed differential pair. But when you look at the illustration there on the right, where we have our analog over array launch optimization, you'll see that we've added, uh, we've, we've, we've emulated uh, launch optimization for an RF connector by adding more vias, uh, by making the anti-pad uh, much smaller, uh, by matching the trace rate, uh, matching the, uh, the trace routing so that they mirror uh, each other correctly. Uh, and, and more. Um, so by adapting some of the RF design characteristics within our digital connectors, in essence, we've been able to increase RF performance within the solution. Something else we've also done, you know, uh, we have a lot of, Samtech has a lot of uh, experience working with laminates that are targeted towards data center applications, Hunter G, Tachyon, and others related to that. Uh, our team realized that while some low-key dielectrics are optimized for 112 gigabit performance or 224 gigabit performance or, or whatever, PCI 6, PCI 7, they don't work very well with eight gigahertz analog, uh, analog signals. So we work with our laminate, vendor, laminate vendors uh, and found that uh, Rogers 3003 PCB uh, offered a, a combination of performance and price point uh, for uh, commercial types of applications given these eight gigahertz bandwidths uh, from the RFSOC. So tying that all together, how does that work from an analog over array standpoint? If you look at the graph, and th these are just two, two, bit, two bits of data, uh, but if you look at the graphic uh, on the left, you'll see the uh, return loss uh, that we have on, on the system between the ZCU-208 and the DTRX. Uh, we put the uh, performance masks as outlined by the Xilinx doc AMD Xilinx documentation return loss of 10 dB. We're way below that for the, for the bandwidth. Uh, I'll take gigahertz, so that's really clean. And then when you look at the uh, crosstalk, um, roughly at uh, 63 dB out to 8 gigahertz, we're well below that uh, as well. Um, and especially around 7, 8 gigahertz, we've got some really good margin uh, within, within the system. So these, these design expert, or these, this design focus, this design expertise of, of optimizing digital connectors for our RF applications is really uh, found a niche in the market, and as uh, 5G and uh, other millimeter wave applications uh, hit the market, similar to this PAM platform, um, we expect to see up uptick uh, of this technology as well. Now that was that was one connector transition. Um, the second tra connector transition we wanted to, to mention in terms of some of the, the RF design expertise that we've been able to add uh, value to the system is, is the uh, RF transition from the a, uh, AIM board to the connector cards uh, on the Otava PAM. So if you look at the, the pictures, uh, the illustrations, I should have made this right to left instead of left. I should have made this left to right instead of right to left, sorry. But going from the right, you see the PAM uh, with the ray dome taking the ray dome off. You can see the uh, AIM cards with the antenna ray uh, that one talked about earlier. Uh, looking at the AIM cards on the back uh, of the uh, AIM cards, we have uh, some edge mount SMP connectors. Uh, which attach to 
surface mount uh, SMP connectors on the combiner card via a, a bolted system. So what were some of the design uh, uh, characteristics that we were able to uh, implement on the uh, SMP connectors to help optimize performance from the transition from the AIM card to the combiner card? Well, one of the, the biggest things was, was trying to find the right connector. Uh, when we were working with Otava and we were working with Avnet, uh, they came to us and said, look, we need a really good 40 gigahertz connector to support uh, the bandwidth of the, of the, of the beam former and the like. Uh, we, need some, we need something small, we need something that's cost effective, and we have this unique uh, uh, AIM to, to combiner card RF backplane style application. So in working with them, we were able to come up with, or we, we identified our SMPM connectors uh, as, as a good solution, very small footprint, they're smaller than, they're smaller than SMP, uh, it's a very push on, you know, it's a very easy to, to mate these with a push on design. So, you know, adding the, 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 the goal of the PAM card was to make a configurable, scalable, flexible architecture. Uh, and, and by, you know, the easy on off, the easy mating of the SMP connector made it an ideal solution for that. Um, the bullet adapter is also uh, variable in height uh, for the application to uh, allow designers flexibility in terms of how they architect their system. Specifically for uh, the AIM application, we have an edge mount SMPM-EM series, which goes on the AM card. There's the bullet adapter and the, the surface mount uh, SMPM uh, on, the, uh, on the combiner card. When we look at the RF performance uh, of these connectors, there's just two, two, two specifications uh, that we look at uh, across the system. You can see that individually, uh, these connectors have very good visoir uh, and insertion loss uh, from zero to 40 gigahertz. Um, as, a as a component selector or as a design engineer or someone that's, that's laying out this system, uh, it's great to look at the individual RF components uh, and look at their performance on an individual basis. But as any system designer knows, it's like, well, how do these all work together in a real world system? And how do we know that we're gonna get the performance that we need from point A to point B uh, in, in the RF world uh, as well? So Samtech realizes that that's a, a common concern uh, with the, the partners and, and our customers that we work with. So we've developed a, a tremendous amount of internal expertise in terms of how we terminate our connectors and cables to PCBs so that we can optimize the performance. So this is just a general uh, illustration of the recommended uh, not only PCB footprints, but grounding schemes, vias, via placements, uh, inner grounding rings, outer, uh, outer grounding rings, and optimization of the traces, as well as the PCB stack ups in terms of how to get the optimized performance uh, within these connectors. Um, one, of my, one of our colleagues at Samtech has, a, uh, has an hour long webinar that he went into the nuances of each of the components uh, of these footprints and of these, the side views uh, of the breakout. So I'm not gonna do that now because I don't have time to do that, but there's a, there's a tremendous amount of engineering expertise that goes into where to place the vias, the size of the, the, the vias, uh, you know, what layer to route the signals out, how to get rid of, of, of stubs uh, on the traces uh, using back drilling and the like. And each of those are fine tuned to optimize the performance of the interconnect so that we can get the, the, the bandwidth and the, and the, the ideal performance uh, for a specific application. Now, tying this back to the AIM card, uh, our engineers were able to work with Otava and Avnet um, to come up with a 3D model uh, of the system, tying not only the, the edge mount, uh, surface mount, and the bullet together. You can see the 3D rendering uh, shown on the left-hand side. And then when you look at the system performance, you know, from the AIM card down to the Pinder guard, you see that you have a very flat uh, insertion loss uh, beyond 40 gigahertz, and we've got a, a really clean uh, visoir uh, out to, to 40 gigahertz as well. There's many other parameters that we could look at, but I picked these out specifically because it tied together to show that the performance uh, of the individual uh, specifications of the connectors work together uh, when they're tied together as a system. Samtech continues to offer uh, a tremendous amount of signal integrity and RF design expertise for our, our customers, for our partners. Uh, as I've mentioned throughout this presentation, there's launch, launch optimization design services. Uh, customers can actually come to us. Our RF, our RF engineers will work with uh, customers and partners on an application specific basis and, and come up with the best uh, uh, system launch optimization. We're always willing to model and simulate a specific application uh, using the tools uh, that we have in our, our, 
our toolbox, physical test and measurement verification, full channel system analysis, uh, specific design and development application uh, assistance, and the fact that we have uh, RF and SI engineers around the globe to support our customers as well. So key takeaways uh, from this section, just briefly, our, an anal our analog over array technology optimizes, that should say routing, not outing. It's great, you, you go through six or seven revs of a presentation and still can't spell routing right, right whatever. Uh, that's the best humor I got today, sorry. Um, we also have a very holistic approach to RF signal chain uh, optimization uh, in applications uh, complex like the Ota uh, Otava PAM. Uh, we also, this is just a brief illustration of a white paper uh, that we've put together uh, that goes into more detail uh, about our analog over array technology. We also have a number of white papers that goes into more detail about our RF launch optimizations uh, and, and the like. For more information, you can visit our website. Next, we'll turn it over to uh, my colleague, uh, Marcus Lerner, and he'll talk about the test and measurement uh, capabilities that, that Roden Schwartz has for the PAM and similar systems.